Welcome everyone, where in this video, I'm going to be ranking every single Zombies game from worst to best. That's right, we've gone through and listed every map before. We've even listed boss fights, but we've not listed the overall games. That means every Call of Duty game that's ever had zombies in it. And these games are going to be critiqued not only for their maps, but also for their game design, the mechanics, and how they revolutionize the mode as a whole. But this is all based purely on my own opinion, so if you disagree, and I'm sure you will, and please let me know importantly your list as well as your opinions down below as I'd love to read them and I'd love to know as well what was your first Call of Duty game let me know and if you want to keep zombies alive then make sure you smack a like on this video right now so I'm sure all of you would love to be playing some brand new zombies maps right now I know I definitely would for the meantime all we have is these awesome videos to go through so without any further delay let's jump in so as this is going from worst to best we're going to kick it off with the worst Call of Duty zombies game which is going to be Advanced Warfare Exo Zombies. Now I don't think this is a surprise for anyone really as Advanced Warfare Exo Zombies was a very rocky roller coaster that never really seemed to get anywhere. Some of the mechanics such as the EMZs which then transformed into EMZ dogs as well made for a very miserable experience and some of the Exo Zombies maps were very much to be desired. And when I say that, I'm looking at you, Burger Town. But looking back on it, back in the day when we had no new Zombies content and this was a Zombies DLC mode, it definitely filled the void of our zombie fix, but it really didn't feel like Zombies at all. The storyline was pretty poor, with none of the characters being overly likeable. The only real appeal was that they were all celebrities playing characters. And besides having an exosuit and the zombies having exosuits, the mode didn't really evolve or evolutionize in any way. Pretty much every perk we've ever seen was just reskinned and added in. We did get ourselves wonder weapons in every map, which is definitely a bonus, but besides the cell free cauterizer, which only comes in as a mediocre weapon, the rest are pretty forgettable. And Advanced Warfare suffers from a problem which I think every other non Treyarch Zombies game did, and it's the fact that the first map for the mode was actually the best map that we got. As in my opinion, I feel Outbreak's definitely the best map out of all the Exo zombies maps it just feels right and it just plays well but coming in as the second worst zombies mode is going to be world war 2 zombies again probably not that much of a surprise to anyone and like i said this game started off with a really good launch map the final reich is a pretty good map even to this day having a lot of things to do a casual and hardcore easter egg path so if you're just looking to play the map and sort of achieve something an end goal you can do that or you can go all the way with the hardcore easter egg and we did have four different wonder weapons as well although they weren't overly exciting world war 2 zombies did try to introduce a new element to zombies that we've never seen before by adding in a horror aspect along with what felt like a map that was alive and as you played the story held your hand and explored every part of it now comparing world war 2 to the games that came before it which was infinite warfare and then black ops 3 again world war 2 zombies didn't really do anything to evolutionize or change the zombies mode in a big way. Consumables returned to the game since it was introduced in BO3, but they felt like an absolute waste of time. And the ideas of most of the consumables seem like things which took no less than a minute to come up with. And as it went on, it just went a bit downhill, then it redeemed itself and then went downhill again. As I do think DLC 2 The Shadowed Throne was a big highlight in terms of how well the World War 2 zombies mode could have gone, because that map was really great as it was a good story storytelling map. Visually it also looked quite nice too but it just felt pretty underwhelming ending it with the frozen dawn and the way that the story ended there. Coming in as third worst and it feels sad to do this but I'm gonna put infinite warfare zombies here. Now don't get me wrong this game was by no means perfect but infinite warfare zombies started off so incredibly strong that people genuinely believe that this was better than any Treyarch game even black ops 3 zombies and I really think that's a credit to just how well designed and how fun the gameplay was on Zombies in Spaceland. It was a perfect launch map, combining a fun, unique atmosphere with tons of new things to do gameplay-wise, new weapons, new enemies. It was just a lot of fun. 
and a really different direction for zombies, which, looking at it now, was a great thing. The Easter egg on Spaceland was pretty easy, but that alien boss fight was so fun, and it still is. And throughout its DLC season, it always tried to mix things up and keep things fresh, fun, and exciting, whilst not taking itself too seriously. Shaolin Shuffle and Attack of the Radioactive Thing are maps that I really, really enjoyed. Beast from Beyond definitely let it down, but they redeemed themselves with an incredible super Easter egg, which was something we'd never seen before. And considering how much hate the zombies mode was getting, it's a real surprise that enough development time was put aside to be able to create the super Easter egg, which makes the game even more replayable. It has a fantastic set of weaponry, with each map having some very unique wonder weapons, which I think are really nice. And for Infinity Ward's first go at proper zombies, they absolutely smashed it. It's obviously a completely different kettle of fish to Treyarch zombies, which is why I'm placing it so low. But overall, it's easily the best non-Triarch Zombies mode that we have gotten to this day. All right, we're three games down. We're now getting it into the halfway mark. So coming in is going to be Black Ops 4 Zombies. Now, by no means is Black Ops 4 Zombies a perfect game. It's easily one of the most divisive Zombies games we have ever gotten, having a launch with two storylines running at once, and then a DLC season continuing on a new storyline that had little interest, and then continuing on with the 10-year storyline we've been following. But at the heart here, Black Ops 4 is by no means a bad game. There is actually a lot of things that Treyarch done that whilst were a big surprise at first and now welcome additions which I think are going to be normalised going forwards, such as being able to pick your perks before you go into the game, having Mastercraft versions of guns you can take in different variants of weapons to use, balancing two different storylines in one game and doing it pretty well in my opinion, as well as completely changing our brains on how we function with some of the most basic perk functionality such as taking away Juggernog as well as changing the way Double Tap works as well as Speed Cola and the Pack-a-Punch abilities. Now that's all said and done and we've really gotten over the fact that these are huge changes I wouldn't be mad if they continued it this way because we've gotten used to it. I understand that the changes were made to get rid of some of the most crutch perks that like you can actually use perks for the sake of them being perks rather than having to have certain things on just to survive and looking as a retrospective now Black Ops for really isn't that bad. We have a real plethora of maps that yo-yo all over the place of maps which have very different receptions depending on who you ask, with some maps in this game being some of the best we've ever played, to some being some of the worst people have ever played. Black Ops 4 definitely has its fair share of issues and problems, but overall it's not by any means a terrible Zombies game. But in my opinion, it just doesn't quite reach the heights that some of the other Black Ops games did. So coming in now at the fourth best game, and this is really going to trigger some people so please hold out to hear the explanation on this but I'm gonna say the next one on this list is Black Ops 2 Zombies. Now hear me out, Mob of the Dead and Origins are absolute masterpieces on that game. Do not get me wrong but remember we're ranking games here not maps and when it comes to Black Ops 2 Zombies it has a real balancing act of really great maps and really awful maps. Starting with Transit and Die Rise was probably one of the worst decisions Treyarch could have made when it comes to zombies experiences because these two maps, well, they're just not great, are they? But they definitely redeem themselves with Mob of the Dead, Buried and Origins, which is just absolutely incredible. And Nuketown Zombies isn't bad either. The game did include some brand new perks, but they were only exclusive to specific maps, something which I think Black Ops 4 has done really well. But aside from that, Black Ops 2 Zombies can't be rated any higher because whilst it has some of the best maps we've ever seen in zombies it also has some of the worst mechanics wise it did try to change things up by introducing turned and grief which were amazing but they did feel like half-baked unfinished modes which we've still yet to see return in zombies maybe we will at some point soon in the next game but for its inconsistency i can't put it any higher now coming in in the third spot is going to be world at war zombies now this was pretty tough as i was actually going to rate it as the second best Call of Duty Zombies game since it really is the OG but I knew I was going to get some very angry comments and then when thinking about it I would place this third and we're going to put World 
at War here because this is what started off everything. If you didn't have World at War zombies, you would not have zombies today. As it introduced so much of what we see today that without World at War, we wouldn't have anything. So you have to respect it. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I played this game when I came home from school and I'd be playing Nakda and Toten or Verrooked or Shinanuma or Darice. The fact that Nakda and Toten has been remade like what like four times now that just goes to show how important that map is as the basis for where zombies began and if we look at Doris as well like look how many times that has been remade that is just another testament to how great some of the content in world at war was introduced absolutely everything that we know today such as the pack-a-punch machine system in Doris, which just changed everything the perk system in verrooked if there's anyone out there that disagrees with this spot then i will personally fight you at pax because this was the origin of zombies and it was so damn fun obviously looking back at it now we're nearly 10 years from that point it has not aged very well and it is quite clunky that doesn't take anything away from the game and the memories and joy and sheer amount of time i've put in this game because it really is a fantastic game but coming in at second place and this was really difficult because I was going to have a joint second place with World at War along with this game, but we're going to put Black Ops 1 Zombies. And there's bound to be a few of you watching who haven't played Black Ops 1 Zombies or didn't experience it when it first released because it was a monumental release. Having Kino de Toten and 5 as launch maps was huge, along with Dead Ops Arcade. That's a lot of Zombies content straight off the bat. And then every single DLC map was pretty darn brilliant. Some more divisive than others. I'm looking at you Shangri-La, but everything else was brilliant. We had the introduction of a brand new perk, which was universal across all of those maps. Kino the Toten and Five are iconic now within gaming, let alone in the zombie space. And having a cliffhanger ending on Moon as big as that, it was truly a magic time for zombies. It was fantastic as well that we had the introduction of these characters, Nikolai, Takio, Dempsey and Richtof in a world at war, but it was only in Shinanuma and Doris that we got this. So we became attached to these characters, but we had no idea what was coming. And this was a full game focused on their story which just built upon all the conspiracies and little things you'd find around the maps in Shinanuma and more importantly Doris to build a storyline. It was the first game that introduced full-on easter egg quests as well and it really just took the game to heights which no one could ever imagine before when we played these characters in World at War. Black Ops 1 should be held as one of the best zombies games clearly because the game was so good that they had to bring all the World at War maps into it as well and having one one map pack that gave you all of those classics as well as a brand new one is incredible but i think the number one contender is obvious here and it had to be black ops 3 zombies this zombies game just turned four years old and it feels just like yesterday that this game came out and we were all playing through this as the dlc season progressed we had an incredible season of zombies maps starting off with shadows of evil and the giant Shadows of Evil being such a unique map, combining so many things we've never seen before and it working so well. The Giant being a beautiful remaster of Doris, which is probably one of the most perfect Zombies maps ever made. Then we got Dorizendrak, and just when we thought Origins could be untouched in that department, Dorizendrak comes along and becomes his twin brother. Setsubono Shima is definitely a interesting one, but Gorod Krovi was absolutely special spectacular and revelations whilst a little disappointing overall the black ops 3 zombies package was very strong and then along came zombies chronicles which just skyrocketed this game to be even greater combining the best maps from world at war black ops 1 and even one of the greatest from black ops 2 and bringing that into a game which was on the current gen which was technically referred to back then as next gen consoles in beautiful high definition with an engine that is a 
lot more favorable for newer players as well as those that have been around zombies for a while, combining all the elements of our fan favorite things such as perks, pack a bunch machine, then involving gobble gums, which completely changed the way that we played any zombies after it. Black Ops 3 Zombies really changed everything and revolutionized it in the way that we had never thought it would go down. It also introduced weapon kits, it also introduced a super easter egg and whilst that was pretty lacking at least there was some sort of incentive and the storytelling throughout the zombies mode from the intro cutscenes to the easter egg endings were truly magical. And that's going to round up my list ranking every zombies game. If you guys have any suggestions on other ranking videos you'd love to see from me listing tons of other things from zombies please drop them down below in the comment section as I'm always looking for some great ideas that I hope you guys would like to see but if you enjoyed the video be sure to smash that like button be sure to subscribe as well with the bell turned on because I'm going to try and do these weekly if you guys want to see that content and you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram links down below in the description you can guys can have a conversation with me talk about zombies talk about Call of Duty whatever you want but thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one